Okay, it looks like we are recording for the weekly uh, Inside Real Estate Strategy webinar. This is actually a re-record. Hello, Annalisa. I have Annalisa with me. Hi, everybody. So it looks like we forgot to hit the record button yesterday. It happens every now and then. It's so embarrassing. So we're recording this without an audience uh, so that we have the replay in the can. Um, you can find the replays at any time at insiderealestate.com slash webinars, and there'll always be a link to all these replays right there. So if you have any questions about the content of this uh, particular presentation, just go ahead and chat and comment in YouTube and somebody will pick it up and reply to you. Or as always, if you have issues, you can always use KV Core support. Awesome. Ready to get going, Annalisa? Let's do her. Okay, so the topic we had this week was a few overlooked KV Core features and nuggets. And these are basically things that are pretty neat and nifty but they kind of get just forgotten about, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, even, even us, I know I forget about a lot of these, you forget about a lot of them. So Annalisa and I got together and we created a list and we're going to run through them here for you today. So let's just jump right in. I'm going to go first into the activity stream sorting and Annalisa, I'll let you kind of walk awesome. through it. Yeah. Well, the cool thing about the activity stream sorting is when you log into your dashboard, it's really one of the first things you should be looking at uh, besides your today's summary and like your to-do list with calls and tasks. So, uh, when you look at your activity stream, you're going to see all sorts of information, and it's basically showing you what your leads have been up to since the last time you logged in. So this keeps track of things for you, and you can use this drop down to actually get into niche views. So is it an email event, new texts, showing requests, etc. And the cool thing about this is this uh, shows open, right? Shows, yeah, it shows open, the, uh, yeah. You can see the email open. You can see opened and clicked. Yep. right here. and when and when so this is a kind of a new feature actually the email open and clicks i think a lot of people saw it, but if you did, weren't aware of that this is where you're going to find those right here in the drop down yep. pretty cool and, and the then cool... Oh, go ahead yep and then we, you know you can scroll through your hot leads um what else did we have in this section annalisa well i was going to say when we look at hot leads or property views uh there's a few visual things in there i want you everyone to be aware of too just to make sure they have you know they have these shortcuts so like your mouse now is over the Scott Dilley uh, Boca Siega Avenue. And when you hover over the picture, it actually shows you the price bed and bath. So that as land or probably a part of a pier, I'm guessing. Uh, and then they also have little uh, timings on them. Like when did they look at this? How did they look at it? So when was this, you know, how many hours or days ago? How desktop mobile? And- Yeah, great. So there's a little icon right there that says mobile. So he was looking on his phone. Yep. Right here. Yeah. And you can also choose to email, call, or text directly off of this without having to open up your smart CRM. And then all of it gets logged on the timeline. So uh, this is a great for a little one-offs if you want to contact people uh, and just, you know, touch base. It's a great thing to look at every day as like your pulse point of your contacts since you last logged in. Is it healthy? Is it needing a little CPR? Where are we at? Great. So yeah, it opens up the text here and then I can, I can alter it and send a quick message. Very convenient. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So that's the, definitely check out your activity uh, board right in the dashboard. Um, and just don't forget about these drop downs and the different options. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, now let's look at saved filter creation. This is really powerful, but I see very few people actually using it uh, regularly. So I'm going to go into the smart CRM here, Annalisa. Right. And you walk me through this one. Yes, absolutely. So the smart CRM filters allow you, I mean, I'm going to say there's no limit on the type of filter you can create within. And you can also save these filters like the one you're seeing there for new active leads without alerts. Uh, so you can create all of these opportunities of things you might regularly come back to or use a lot and store them so you don't have to continually rebuild something. So I'm going to build one now. I'm doing a filter. As Annalisa said, you can do whatever you want, but I'm going to do mm -hmm. one for has no market reports. And then what I'll do is I'll click apply filters. That'll change the list of contacts right here. Mm -hmm. People who don't have market reports. And then if I come in, I can click save filters, right? Yes. So I'll save this and I'll say no market reports. Save new filter. And this is useful because I might come in every day and work through my filters and make sure that, say, my new active leads without alerts, um, right. you know, that I make sure I set up the alerts. And then now I'm going to add this one that I just created 
to this list up here next to the new active. And the way I'm gonna do that is with yeah. this gear, right? Yeah, you click that little cog and then you can toggle filters on or off to your liking. You can delete a filter. And when you toggle them on, they're just gonna lay out across the top of your smart CRM for easy access. Great, so yeah, definitely. Uh, there's any different number of categories you might have here. You might have your past clients showing up there. You might have only your hot leads as a quick link, right? right? Um, people who, again, respond the via text. Are, yeah, people you know. who responded a certain way. Yeah. So the neat thing about this is you can say, you know, I, I want to see the people I just called last month, this year, uh, who requested showing lately, what properties are they looking at, and you can really get into some really uh, nitty gritty information and, and filters, which is pretty neat. Great. I like this one, the requested a showing. So if they requested in the last month, this way you just don't forget about those people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. So that is the smart CRM filters. Now let's look at the dialer lists from the app. And I always get a little uh, uh, messed up here. So bear with me, I'm opening up kind of a demo version walkthrough uh, of the app since I can't mirror my phone <laughs> quickly from Zoom. So let's bring this up. And uh, uh, one, a few things to keep in mind is that basically any lists that you build up here, right? With your filters, you can now access and call from the um, app. Dialer. So, so yeah, it's, it's awesome. So it's really, really useful. You can see right here, we have our custom lists. I can do all of today's calls, my new leads, uh, people in the activity stream. And then right here, your saved filters will show up in order for you to call them as well from the main mm -hmm. dialer. Yeah, and anything you create in the app or desktop will update in either one. So it's uh, always connected. Great. Okay, so uh, next we have pinning notes in timeline. I was blown away when you showed me this yesterday. I didn't realize you could do this, uh, but it's very handy. Yeah, it's great. You just open up your contact and then uh, up on the upper right hand corner, you can click add note. And then you can add in any information that you need to refer back immediately if you're going to have a conversation with someone, whether it's looking for this type of home, maybe you want to note they're a teacher, their husband uh, is, was a veteran, uh, we're looking at VA loans or, you know, information such as that. Uh, maybe their kids' names, their pets' names, things that you want to remember to stay personable with this uh, client. Yep, kids' name something like that. Yeah, and then, young right, Fred. Yep, and then right here is where we pin it to the top. So if I click yeah. this pin to the top, click save. And now you can see I have a pinned note for that contact. Yeah, and you can edit it anytime you need to or check it out the window or unpin it. Perfect. So definitely don't forget about that. It's probably good to have a pin note for almost everybody you talk to, you know, to mm -hmm. summarize what you learn about them on those first interactions. For sure. And, and while also, you're typing, oh, I was going to say, while you're typing and adding notes, you can also hashtag as you type if you need to add additional things you want to track. So uh, it's a neat way to keep track of things. Right. So I just typed a hashtag in here and it brought up a list of my hashtags. Very useful. Yep. Right there. And I can add that. And then when I search for people with that hashtag, they'll actually show up in the search uh, in that right. filter. Right. So very cool. Custom notes right here inside of your contact record. And you can pin them up to the top. Uh, next one, voicemail drops. This is a feature that we launched pretty recently um, where you can now add Sly kind of dial was the, was the one of the solutions out there uh, where it rings somebody's mobile phone, but then it never, the person on the other end never hears uh, the ring and then you can leave a message and this is called a voicemail drop. Well, what we have integrated here, if you go to the KV Core Marketplace is that you can actually, uh, integrate voicemail drops into smart campaigns if you mm -hmm. subscribe to the voicemail drop service. So, And I believe you can do one-offs when you've added it via your smart CRM dropdown on mass actions. That is right. So it can either yep. be as part of a smart campaign or you can go into the smart CRM right here, uh, pick a filtered list of leads. Mm -hmm. Just give me a second. And as Annalisa said, I could check all these off and do more actions, send a voicemail like that. And uh, yeah. it's really cool. You can actually record the voicemail right in the system as you're creating your mass send or as you create templates in smart campaigns. 
it gives you that whole complete uh, setup of contact methods, actually. It's, it's, I love it. Yeah, uh, and you know some common uses for this. In case you're wondering, uh, one good use would be just lead follow up right away. Hey, thanks for visiting my site. It lets somebody hear your voice. Uh, you're building rapport in an automated, leveraged way if they can hear your voice. And then when when emails start coming to that lead, they they kind of have a voice attached to that name, and they're getting to know you a little bit. Similar to what our core voice our core video does, it allows people to see you. And then another big use for core voicemail will be to stay in touch with past clients, where you could build a smart campaign and then automatically say every six months, send a voicemail. It's like, hey, just doing a check-in, hope you're doing okay. Uh, feel free to get in touch if you know anybody who needs to buy or sell, something like that, so. Right, and, and you can actually trigger these in your templates within a smart campaign, right? Right, so if I go to templates here, I'm in marketing autopilot with smart campaigns. I can add a template and then I can add a voicemail. Now, this demo account doesn't have the voicemail service subscribed, um, but you would see an option to add uh, a voicemail. Actually here, <laughs> you can see it kind of appearing right here. Yeah, so it's ready to go when it gets ordered. Yeah, so definitely a cool feature. That is the core voicemail. And again, it's one that's kind of, it's in there. We kind of launched it about three months ago, but I think a lot of people don't realize it's there. I've had a few people ask, hey, can we do voicemails? And I'm like, yeah, in fact we can. Uh, and this is how, so great. Now let's dig into the listings uh, section of KV Core. Yeah, there's some really neat uh, highlights that I want to make sure people are seeing, like they're looking and drinking it in every day because there's a lot of great key information here. So when you're looking at an individual property, maybe it's Yonath or Burnwick there, uh, whichever, you can click into a specific property. And there are different types of tabs right underneath the photo and the main property information with the single family, the address, the MLS number. Uh, so you've got the overview and gallery and map. Uh, you also have similar listings, nearby listings and view activity. And we're gonna go over each of these. So similar listings is going to have the system comparing uh, all these different factors about the home of which we're looking at currently to the other homes for sale in the area. And it pulls in a like, like an apple to apple comparison saying, okay, all of these homes are similar to that property. And the neat thing here too, is you can leverage the views or sort by price and city. So if you want to give someone a sense of urgency and you see there's been like 20, 30 views, you can say, you know what, this is really taking off. We should go sooner than later. I'm going to send you the virtual tour or what have you. So you've got a lot of opportunity there uh, to also supply people maybe with properties they haven't thought of looking at before. Perfect. Yep. And uh, yeah, I'm playing around here with the action so I could send a text to an entire hashtag or an email with all those similars. Yep. Really and, and we have the nearbys too. Yeah, it's real similar with nearby. So this is something that gives you a bit of an edge. Uh, maybe you are going out on a property tour or you want to send people homes that are in the same area. Maybe they aren't quite tick the boxes on everything they're looking for. However, this gives you all of the homes within a three mile radius for that property. So, you know, you have all of these properties in your back pocket yep. to present to someone are as options. Yeah, and really useful, on the fly. really useful too. You know, one thing you can do to differentiate yourself from other agents with a fresh lead is maybe look at one of the properties you see them looking at over in, um, you know, on the dashboard in the activity yep. stream. And then you can come in here and you can do again the text and do something like, hi, I saw you were checking out one, two, three, main. Here's a handful of others that I picked that are similar. Uh, and I can actually remember, Annalisa, back when I sold in, in Philadelphia in the 2000s, mm -hmm. we didn't have all this technology. Uh, but one of the things I would do is I would, my, my instant email when I got a new lead was something like, hey, uh, thanks for looking on my site. Would it be okay if I went and handpicked you a quick list of uh, properties that fit your criteria? That was yeah. more or less the question. Some people will reply yes. And I would, I would actually have to go into the darn MLS and <laughs> build out a link, you know? Um, and, Manually. And Ooh. Yeah, in this case, you could just come in here and do the same thing based on what you saw them, you know, the criteria they give you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a neat added feature and it's super quick to use. Yeah, so awesome. And then view activity, this is the activity on the listing if there's any on your site, right? Right, so if anybody's come and viewed it, you'll be able to see anyone in, the, in your database that's viewed that particular property. 
Great. Uh, I will point out too, you know, it's kind of buried. Um, I have seen some previews. We have some awesome stuff coming with these listing pages. You're going to be able to do a lot more in the coming months here. Uh, but these actions are a little buried with the three dots. Uh, just keep mm -hmm. in mind, remember that you can post listings to Craigslist, to different social media channels, generate a QR code, and some of these other actions as well. Right. Cool. Um, so now let's see here. What's the sorting columns? Did I forget? Well, if we go back to the main uh, listing page, it's very similar to sorting columns in the Smart CRM. Okay. So you can go to the top, like the far right across the uh, column or across the row and click columns on the drop down. And you can choose what you want to see and what you don't want to see. Got it. So I can see my baths or not see them. Right. Can... Or if you don't want to see the agent or the Craigslist information, you can vary your view. Now, it is a one-off view. It doesn't stick. So if you need to adjust it when you come back, you know, expect that it, the one you just did will not be there. Yeah, I never noticed that Craigslist tells you if you've ever posted at the Craigslist. Mm -hmm. And that's also a good reminder for you to look at the properties and you know, maybe bring up your own companies or your own listings and make sure you're covering all of your marketing options. Yeah. And don't forget that you can also sort at the top of every column, whether you're in the smart CRM and listings, you can click this little kind of arrow underneath each column yep. and sort in order. Very cool. Okay. So uh, now let's get into something really fun. Uh, this was actually what yeah. the feature inspired me to want to do this topic um, because I was hanging out in marketing autopilot. And I was like, oh yeah, we do birthdays and anniversaries. And I was like, I know. Should... And yeah. it was such a big thing. I mean, I was just like, what? Yeah. So let's dig in here. The way you find this is you go to marketing autopilot uh, and you go down to birthdays and anniversaries right here. Mm -hmm. and basically what this does is it allows you to automatically send texts or emails to wish somebody a happy birthday or happy anniversary of their purchase. So you've right. got uh, in this feature, I would consider this a sphere of influence and a past client power feature, you know, a way to automatically just stay in touch with people, make timely touches without in a leverage way, without having to do a lot of manual work on your own. And a nice low key way of staying in touch in a friendly. Yeah. So how it works is that you choose the statuses that you want these automated birthday email texts or anniversary texts to go out for, and then it'll send the template that you choose right here. So uh, here's the email and here's the text. And I know, Annalisa, you were saying that I think it prioritizes the text. Right. If a contact has a texting phone number, we will send it via text. If there's no phone number attached to text two, we will email it. So the default will be text. The standby is email. Great. So um, the way to change the template is you just click change template and it's going to give you the a list of all your templates that you've created in the smart uh, campaign section. You can run it on the date or you can choose to run it in the set number of days prior to their birth date. So let's, yeah. let's go a little further here. I'll explain. Um, if you do want to create your own template, let's show how to do that, right? I was just going to say, you could create a video. <laughs> yeah. So if I go to marketing autopilot here, and I go to smart campaigns and go into the smart campaigns. Mm -hmm. And then if you're newer, just remember a smart campaign is like the container for the template. So it's kind of like you've got your, your pasta with the filling, right? So you've got your campaign templates that go into your campaign library. Great. And then, uh, so yeah, I'm clicking templates up top here. And now I can add, and remember, it's going to send either an email or an SMS. So mm -hmm. I'll just show you the example. I would add my email template. I might call this uh, Brian's happy birthday right. video. And then I'm going to open up the advanced editor. And I can do a regular email using the email editor. But as Annalisa just mentioned, this also integrates with Core Video. If you have right. a Core Video Premium uh, bomb, bomb integration, then you could create a video. Uh, a happy, you can sing happy birthday, you know, you mm -hmm. and your business partner, whoever, and people will feel like you sent them a unique uh, birthday message. You could do something like this, put a little text block up above, say hi, first name, right? So it'll yep, feel like first, so first name, yep. Just wanted to wish you a quick happy birthday. Don't mind my singing. 
like that, have a little fun with it. And uh, that's about it. Don't mind my singing, of course, will make them like more curious about clicking on the video. <laughs> and, and, right. and it makes you more human. Yeah. Happy birthday. All right. Video enclosed, something like that. So, and then this would be the template that you choose. So go ahead and add my template. And then I would just choose this from the list inside of the uh, autopilot Mistakes. feature. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, you know, back here to the happy anniversary feature, um, you know, think about it. You could do a video that says, hey, uh, happy anniversary of your home purchase. And you can literally in the video, uh, ask them if they have any, ask for referrals. You could also say, hey, it's been a year since you bought, mm -hmm. uh, been a year or so before since you bought your house. Um, uh, if you wanna buy an investment property, now might be a good time. You can record a video that says this basically. And couldn't you even speak to refinancing or yeah, or you, like income properties? I mean, there's different, so many things you could reference there, which is awesome. Yep. Now people are probably wondering where do I set the date for the birthday or the anniversary? Right. So um, I'll show you that. Basically it happens within the contact record. Uh, and a best practice would be, you know, as you talk to people, collect their birthdays. We've had questions about whether you can import them from Facebook. Unfortunately, Facebook doesn't let have their API. They don't have any APIs or anything that lets you pull birthdays down. Um, but as Facebook lets you know every morning, Annalisa, I think you, you get that, <laughs> right? Yes. Um, so they'll say, hey, Annalisa's birthday's today. Well, maybe you, every morning as you get that information, you go into your KV core system and say, okay, here are my birthdays for today. And you go find those contacts and add them in. Right. And another thing you can do as well is as you add them, drop a hashtag like November B-Day. Uh, maybe you want to send a video or maybe you want to make sure you've done it. Uh, you can track all of that different information with the tag as well. Great. Yeah. So that's just right down here. And I would just add the date right here and save it. And then the anniversary of purchase, I'm forgetting. Where is that? I believe it's up above. Let's see here. It's... Uh, it's going quick for me in my eyes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it may have to do with when they when it, the status went. I believe it's the status date. I'm going to yeah. double check. Last close date right here. Yeah. This, this may be it. Okay. So, um, so yeah, anniversaries and birthdays, definitely a feature you'll want to use. Again, that tip where you get that email from Facebook every morning, uh, that would be a good time to maybe mm -hmm. just go ahead and, uh, you know, the five people that Facebook tells you has a birthday today, just go find them in KV Core, uh, add their birthdays and, you know, five minutes a day and you're staying in touch with a lot of people in a really cool way. Yep. And LinkedIn gives you that information as well. So if you notice, if you log into LinkedIn, it'll tell you, hey, it's somebody's birthday. And then you can either add that in, say happy birthday, what have you. Great. Um, so agent alerts right here, by the way, uh, I didn't mention it up top, but Annalisa has gone through here, the doc that we're running through, and there's a link to all of these features uh, right. that you can find in the help desk. So mm -hmm. if you're watching this replay on YouTube or you're watching it on uh, Facebook, we'll make sure we include a link to this doc. And remember, you can click all the links to drill in for more info. Uh, so agent alerts, let me go into behavioral automations right here. Whoops. Uh, where we find that is under marketing autopilot. And we'll go to behavioral automation right up here at the top right. And basically what this means is the system's going to react based on some type of online behavior that your contact triggered, whether they visited the site so many days, is it a property so many times in a week, favorites of property. Uh, it's going to keep track of this information for you so you don't have to constantly give your CRM the hairy eyeball. So this takes care of it for you uh, and it'll, you can actually set up automated features. So if you want to be notified when these things happen, here are the toggles right here under behavior. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can also on your mobile app, you can set up push notifications. So if you have your mobile app, click the little hamburger at the top left of your dashboard on your app and then you can set that up. I was hoping the, the demo here would do it for me. Let's see, settings. Not this version, but yeah, it's up in that yeah. hamburger, the little gear up yep. top. Okay, so um, that's that. Uh, another question we have a lot around behavioral alerts is how do I make it not automatically send these messages? And the way you do that is by controlling the contact types right. that get the messages. Uh, 
Um, so uh, I like to have it so uh, my active leads, people who have a pulse and who have talked to me, won't get these. And then we have this other setting up here that says, hey, if I get a new lead and the person does reply, we'll move them into active status. And you mm -hmm. see by moving them to active status, it shuts off these behaviorals. So the system doesn't make you look uh, silly. You know, a common thing that could happen is you get a lead, you call them on the phone, you have a nice conversation. Um, and then the lead keeps searching on your site. You know, they favored a property, for example, and then it sends them this automated message 10 minutes after you got off the phone with them. Right. Um, the way to the way to control that would be to have it set so that um, you know they're an active lead and that doesn't happen. Now this does impl imply, Annalisa, that that you are you are going to want to make sure you manage your contacts from day to day, which you should be doing every yes. anyway. Um, Before you leave here, on the behavioral automation on the top right, I just want to point out that even if you archive a contact, people are like I'm I, you know they haven't been around and they come back, it's going to update their contact record uh, type back to active. So it's going to adjust all that and you're going to get an email and a note on the timeline. Perfect. So yeah, don't be sure to go check out the behavioral automation to make sure you have that configured yep. how you want it. A lot of people overlook that right there. Uh, agent alerts in behavior. Okay. Now lead engine here, let's go to the market report squeeze. I'm going to go into the lead engine. And this is a feature that um, I think it gets overlooked because it's just the last option in our squeeze section. Right. I'm going to go here. I'm going to click and start. And it's super building. easy to make a squeeze. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people come in. They're like, oh, I'm going to make a multi-property squeeze page. Awesome. I'll set the property views, all the cool stuff you could do here. Uh, sometimes they'll go make one for a single property. You might make one to generate seller leads with the seller squeeze. But you got this little lonely <coughs> excuse me, market report squeeze sitting over here going, hey, what about me? Um, so uh, the way that looks, I'll just show you what it does is I'll just type in Tampa, Florida right here. Uh, I'll pick my sources, Facebook, uh, and then we'll hashtag these leads. Uh, I'll just pick a random one for now. And what this does is just like our other squeezes, you click generate link. And when you share these links on Facebook or you drive uh, paid traffic to them, it tries to uh, generate a lead for you. So I just visited the URL. Zoom slowing my computer down here a minute. Uh, yeah, but when yeah. the traffic gets here, oh, I'm already logged in. So I'm already logged in. So it shows me, <laughs> it shows me the report. But let me show you what happens if I wasn't logged in. I'll go in an incognito window. And when you create these, they're based off of a single area. So it's not something you can stack together like with a comma and drop them in like a, maybe a hashtag. Uh, it's based on a single area. So your ad might run something like see a complete current market report, uh, real estate market report for Tampa, Florida now. And then somebody goes to this link and if they register, they're going to get that hashtag that you chose when you built the link. Right? Mm -hmm. So they would sign up and then they get redirected to see the actual report. Right yeah. There. And this kind of ties into the information that we get from the areas we cover, which I think we're going to uh, talk to pretty soon. Yep. So yep, definitely don't forget about the market report squeezes. Now let's go ahead now into our web and IDX settings. Um, and you know, we can go ahead, let's knock out these area pages because yeah. it is a related topic. So we'll skip around a bit here. I'm gonna go into web and IDX. So on the, on the dashboard via KB Core, you have your web and IDX and your S service areas and SEO. And those match up with the areas we cover on the front side of your site. And you can customize these, which is pretty neat. Yeah, so I'm opening this up. And you'll see here, if I click on any of these cities, this is what our areas pages look like. And to give you, just to give you a little tip, you might be hard to see in your browser, but um, you can actually add any city name or any zip code to the end of your website slash areas mm -hmm. and then put this at the end. So for more advanced users, you know, a uh, little bit of a hack there, you can quickly go to the pages for any area in your MLS. Yeah, and this uh, pulls directly from the MLS of which you are connected via your brokerage partner. So it's always going to pull the most accurate information we can get our hands on. Yeah. And it also gives you the ability to see the types of properties, whether they're uh, a total new, reduced, uh, just listed foreclosures. I mean, it's uh, 
most popular, most inexpensive, you know. Uh, so you've got all these options at your fingertips automatically pulling in data for you. And if someone says, hey, grandma lives in Baywood or Boca Senga or, you know, a specific neighborhood within that area, you can actually drill down into that and see those specific types of properties. Yep. Um, another uh, little tip here is that you can actually add text to the page or HTML. So mm -hmm. you can do, let's just do, oh, you can see where it says page text. If I go to my Aguada, here is where the text or HTML shows. I'll save this and then you'll see what I mean here. Now, something I've asked our product team to do is currently this text and this HTML will show up at the bottom of the page, right down here. Yep. So this here's where it shows. Uh, so I'm hoping to get it so that it shows up top because what that'll allow you to do is do like a nice video YouTube embed uh, mm -hmm. intro of the area and you create a really kind of comprehensive market uh, page for that neighborhood, a neighborhood page. Well, and I would think you could also build in links uh, for you know seller information, buyer information, down payment information. <laughs> You could also do calls to action to your main thing too. So you, yeah. can, you can have a video says, welcome. Uh, here's my page about Aguada. See the stats down below. Um, and also if you want to get my free report about seven things you, you should do before you sell your home, um, you know, to get max, max uh, <laughs> as much money possible when you sell your home or something like that, you could have a link to that above, right. but then promote these neighborhood pages on Facebook as a, as a way for local homeowners to get the info. Mm -hmm. And it really lends the local expertise that you have. Yeah, you have a chance to talk about the neighborhood, definitely. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's now go into our website settings again and talk about these two other things here. We have our uh, adjusting of listings and properties that show on the site. Right. So, so on the front side of your site, uh, to edit this, you're going to click on Web and IDX. And then when this website manager opens, which is loading right now, uh, just to the right of that box where it says NA right now, there's going to be a little edit settings. Yeah. And this is your access to the whole index of possibilities within the website that you can change. So I'm gonna go down to the listing section particularly, right? Yes, yes, for sure. Because this is something that I think not a lot of people are aware of. This is where you can adjust, like maybe you're like, I don't want rentals or I don't want manufactured homes. This is where you can go in and don't, you know, remove the, the check so they don't show up on your website. So you can adjust this information that we're pulling from your MLS really easily. And then always remember to save your work. Yep. And then this will, yeah, and we'll save it right here. Uh, yep. I didn't know I could remove pending. That was annoying me for a while. So oh, yeah. Keep my rentals there and click save. And then the other feature you mentioned, uh, we have our popular options right here as well, right? Right, and these are all tied into your MLS. So if you have specific filters that you rely on in your MLS, maybe it's HOA fees, maybe it's high schools, maybe it's fencing exterior, uh, pool features, water views, what have you, you have the ability to drop those commonly known filters in here or you know, regularly used filters and build it out as part of your search feature on the front side of your site, as well as the default display and ahead from above that, you have the ability to change the view so you can see a map view, a grid view, or a list view of the properties. Yep, yeah, definitely something to take a look at. And then this also allows you to build some interesting links to send to people. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, for example, you could do waterfront with dockage. Uh, right. Yeah, you know, with uh, salt water on salt water or something like that. You can get really niched down. Cool. Yeah, it's just a neat feature to, to take your, get your eyeballs on. Great, and then the embeds, definitely one that I don't think people get to very often if we go into our website settings again. Right, so the embeds are going to give you your QR codes and uh, code of which you can drop onto other websites to lead people to your site for a search. So I'm up here, I'm clicking embed. You can see the tab up where I have my cursor. Mm -hmm. embeds. So within this, you have the ability to drop in a QR code or create one, I should say, for your website specifically. 
So if you're an admin or uh, head of team, you'll, you know, you can choose different options depending on your level of access or you can choose your own. Yep. Or you can create QR codes for specific listings right there right. by putting the MLS number in. Mm -hmm. And so, these are handy for you to drop onto a sign writer, print media. What else would you drop it onto? I put them on my Zoom background sometimes. Oh, that's right. That's right. I fell victim to that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to bring it up. Where's that? I have one now. I have one now that everybody should scan. Let me see. I think oh, Annalise, boy. Annalise has been Rickrolled in the past. I have been Rickrolled in the past. Uh, but don't worry. I, I drop them into some training stuff once in a while. So I share the love. Let me see. Start video. <laughs> Man, I was having trouble with that. Well, there we go. Uh, can yeah. you see? <laughs> yes. Okay. Now I got to do it here. Let me get, let me stop the share. <laughs> All right, there it scan, is. pause the video and scan the code. Yeah. Right you there. Won't re you won't regret it. Well, it's actually not the one that, I, <laughs> oh, okay. in, the past, in the past, it went to a Rick roll. All right. Um, so that is not what this one's going to do if you're expecting that, but it does something else very cool <laughs> uh, that everybody here should, should be involved with. So definitely get your phone out, scan that code. If you don't know how to scan, you can get a QR code app or from, from your app, the Apple iTunes store or from Android, or I think a lot of modern phones, you can actually just put your camera up to it and it'll do it for you. Yeah, your Android will actually just uh, read it in, which is really awesome. Yeah, so here we go. I'm gonna stop the video again. Here we go. And you should have my screen back up, right, Annalisa? I do. Great, um, so yeah, that's website embeds, uh, listing sorting, uh, the SEO area pages. And I think we just have one more thing to talk about here and we'll get wrapped up. Yes, business analytics, consumer interest, this is a key piece of information everyone should be looking at. Yep, so if you go here, you see the business analytics section. Um, I think this is often overlooked because it's kind of like, it doesn't explicitly do anything. It just kind of tells you what kind of results you're getting from the system. Um, right. So uh, definitely gonna wanna go here if you're spending money on certain lead sources, if you're using our property boost or our other marketplace options, uh, or if you're spending money on things like Zillow, realtor.com, you can have it set up so you can actually see the results coming in through business analytics. Uh, and then buried in here, I would say not buried, but it's in one of these tabs, kind of like our squeeze reports earlier that kind of gets forgotten about. Right. Um, we have this consumer interest. So go to that. I love this. Here. And wasn't somebody asking about how do we see the top properties in my area the other day in the Facebook group, or was that yesterday? I think so, uh, but yep. this is the place where you would do it. I brought up the wrong browser. I was so prepared. I had, uh, I don't have a lot of activity in my demo account here. Um, so you have to take my word for it, but go look on your site and what you'll find is that the system will actually tell you the top properties that are being viewed and saved. And the mm -hmm. tip that I always like to give here is that if you see a property is really resonating with your website traffic and it's got the most views, that might be a good property to run a property boost for, to share on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. Um, you're getting clues as to what the market likes and then you, in your marketing, you can go and give that information back. So sorry, I had the wrong dashboard up here, but I think, uh, I think everybody can follow what I'm saying. Just go to your consumer interest and uh, use that data. Yeah, it's, it's super handy because it's what top properties and uh, most commonly viewed. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, you can also see if you're an admin, you can also see your agent performance, who's finishing the agent success plan, for example, uh, mm -hmm. in the agent performance section. And uh, again, just don't, don't overlook business analytics. It's very useful, especially if you're spending a lot of money on leads. It'll help you make decisions about which sources are working and which aren't. Uh, one thing I will say about business analytics, it does assume that you are working your leads, every lead you get, and that you're properly categorizing them into right. the right buckets. So if it you relies are, on the work you put into it. Yeah, you need to keep your database organized. The system will try to do as much as it can automatically, but you are going to, for example, want to change that new lead who you have a conversation with, change them into an active lead or a client as you go mm -hmm. along. And then business analytics will give you really good data uh, if yeah. you're doing and then you have it going along that transaction pipeline uh, so you can see it, your uh, broker can see it or whomever, and it's just really handy to look at. Yeah. So that kind of brings us to the end, Annalisa. I think we did pretty good here. I definitely hit the record button this time. Sorry about yesterday. Yes, affirmed. It's, it's recorded. <laughs> okay. So uh, we do these uh, generally, they occur Wednesdays at 2 p.m. East, um, 11 a.m. PST. 
at insiderealestate.com slash webinars page like this where you can get you can get the sign up link for these if you want to view them live and we always post the replays uh, to a YouTube playlist currently it looks like this you can click this blue button and see the playlist don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button in YouTube and also be sure to check out the Facebook group at insiderealestate.com slash Facebook group anything else Annalisa I don't think so thanks for having me on and I this was a fun time Great. Yeah, we'll see you here again soon. Thanks a lot, everybody, right. for watching. Thanks. Bye.